thank you everybody for uh, joining us today. Uh, really excited to be here talking about um, being in the cloud, how to embrace complexity in the cloud. We're going to focus in on a few key areas, but just wherever you are in your journey to the cloud, um, you know, we're zeroing in on a couple of key questions today and hopefully getting really practical with how you can simplify your move to the cloud while also embracing complexity. So we're going to level set a little bit. Um, you know, we've got some great, uh, great conversations set up for today. I'm really excited to hear from Samib, really excited to share a little bit um, from our perspective at bandwidth between Lauren and I. Um, but we're going to level set on why even move to the cloud in the first place. Why are enterprises moving their communications to the cloud? Um, how does unbundling sort of this decision to separate the telecom from the actual platform that you may be moving to? Um, how does that lead to more things than just the, the potential cutting of costs? Um, and then we're going to kind of hear from uh, both sides of the equation here, right? The carrier, um, we'll hear from bandwidth's perspective, and we'll hear from the platform, um, hearing from Ring Central. Just as we think about this vision uh, that we have together to simplify the move to the cloud while also future proofing communications um, with partners that are focused on innovation. So um, just wanted to introduce everyone here on the call. Um, if we haven't met, uh, we're bandwidth. Uh, Lauren and I are, are both representing bandwidth today. Um, quick note about what we do at bandwidth. So if you're not familiar with us, you know, we are a cloud native carrier that powers the voice or SIP trunking, uh, messaging, 911 access, and emergency services across the globe, and then phone numbers. Um, you know, we're a cloud native carrier, as I mentioned, but we also combine the simplicity of software. Um, we've got a robust uh, API platform that allows our customers to truly embed communications into their own platforms. Um, and then that leads me to talk about a little about who we do it for. So we are focused on serving, you know, enterprises across the globe. Some of the logos you see here on this slide. Um, come to bandwidth because they're large and complex and they're digitally transforming their employee communications. That could be business phones. They're moving to a UCAS platform, just like Ring Central, as we're going to talk about today, um, potentially others in the mix there too. But moving to Ring Central, um, contact centers, they're doing it all and they're doing it all while navigating this complex path to the cloud. Um, we've, we've built a reputation though. So we, we focus on enterprises, but we also have a reputation of um, powering these top enterprise grade platforms. And that leads me to uh, teeing up Samip. Um, Samip's here, and, and we have this strong 10 year partnership between Ring Central and Bandwidth. Um, and, and we're powering solutions for Ring Central behind the scenes, you know, plugging into the, the care services aspect there, um, but working hand in hand to really deliver the highest quality experience for our business customers together. And Samit, why don't you talk just a little bit, just in case anybody's not not familiar with Ring Central, um, but also kind of the vision for for where you guys have come from and where you're headed here. Absolutely, yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Travis. Really excited here to talk to everyone. Uh, thank you for taking some time with us. Um, and this slide kind of walks you through a little bit about the history of Ring Central. Um, you may or may not have heard of us. You know, we've been around for a bit. It goes even further back than this slide shows. We started out uh, in facts, and this slide kind of talks about innovation, but from my view, it's always been about customer pain points, right? So, you know, we started working on focusing on how can we simplify and improve that kind of PBX environment that, you know, that phone system, right? And then we started to add capabilities that were more meaningful to customers, right? Adding video, adding API platforms so you can extend it out. Um, I personally spent a lot of time on our global office expansion. So for customers that might have multiple locations in multiple countries, right? These are all natural extensions for us as we talk to our customers and said, hey, what's what's a problem for you? You know, what what is a challenge for you? And that's a little what we'll talk about today with BYOC about how this is kind of that natural evolution. And so obviously we've been able to build a, a pretty uh, industry leading uh, offering with addressing these pain points and helping customers uh, look at these and using technology to improve or solve uh, a number of these areas. Uh, and the nice part is, you know, as we go through these, you don't have to, you don't have to just take my word for it or Travis's word. Um, you know, we've got a lot of accolades, thankfully, from the industry um, who recognize, you know, for several years, right, that we've been in this kind of position moving forward, continue to address. And the nice part for me is, you know, vision aside, like in execution, we've been in that leadership side for a long, long time, right? Obviously, the Gardner Magic Quadrant is a great one. Um, they rank us very high in a number of critical capabilities, which we're always very proud of. Um, and IDC and Frost and Sullivan, right? A lot of these, uh, you know, analysts, um, you know, have, you know, looked well upon us uh, and we're very happy and thankful for that and a lot of that is in 
thanks to our partnerships, not just the work that we do, but selecting the right leading partners uh, like bandwidth to help power our solutions. Yeah, awesome. Um, and yeah, I think that kind of sets us up for just where I wanted to start today. Um, you know, why, why'd you sign up to hear from us today? If you're if you're listening to this webinar, or maybe listening back to it, um, and maybe saying it just a little bit differently, you know, why should you pay attention to us, right? What does Ring Central have to say? And what does bandwidth have to say about BYOC? And so um, I'll tee up just to kick things off and kind of get to the punchline early. And then we're going to go deep on a couple of these areas, uh, you know, throughout the rest of the conversation. But um, Samip and Lauren, you know, you both bring these incredible perspectives, you know, from bandwidth and ring central um, around this idea of what does it mean to bring your own carrier? Um, but not only that, I think you both have, you know, unique perspectives and experience in the communication space, you know, from the product development, product management, um, software development space. Um, so either one of you want to start, it doesn't matter, uh, but just kind of at a really high level, why do each of you have a unique vantage point on bring your own carrier for the enterprise? Maybe we can start with Lauren, just to give you a, a chance yeah. to kick it off here for us. Absolutely. Well, I think when, without being too much of a spoiler, by the way, <laughs> but I, for <laughs> later on, but I think when when the promise of cloud platforms were first being delivered, um, they're fantastic for some use cases, right? For they promised a simplicity that was going to be, you know, super easy, everything bundled in one, no infrastructure, no on-prem anything, login from anywhere. And and by the way, it has delivered that. There's a lot of comfort, there's a lot of customers for whom that's still a fantastic thing. But there's a lot of customers for whom actually decoupling their carrier stack from absolutely everything that it's plugged into was simply too much or not practical. A lot of reasons um, have evolved over time, whether it's on-prem or our um, uh, on-prem legacy things that still need to be there. We'll talk a little bit more about that later, to um, being needing numbers in countries that weren't available. There's a, there's a whole host of reasons that we'll dive into. And as a result, what we've seen is what started as sort of completely tight, tightly bundled solutions are now almost every platform out there is offering this dual track. Do I want to s sell just my like Ring Central MVP, right? Fantastic platform. Or do I want to open this up so that customers can bring their own carrier into the mix? And I think there's really compelling reasons for both. Depending on depending on honestly the size of the business and the, the kind of technology infrastructure that they have. Yeah, and so Samip, um, great great insight there, Lauren. But Samip, from your perspective, um, and Ring Central's right, what's what's in it for our audience from your unique perspective on BYOC today? Yeah, I mean, I think BYOC has always been an interesting one for us because we we spent a lot of our time building out you know uh, the the solutions all in one, right? And we'll talk a little about this later. Uh, but for us, it really is about enabling customers. And as we move, you know, over the last 10 years into larger and larger customers, we see some more cases and scenarios and things like that where they have, you know, those strong relationships, they have those pieces. And, you know, for us, it's really about giving customers the ability and flexibility and choice to use the right provider, the right mix of solutions. Or I think our CMO had a, had a fun statement about UCAS Lego. And, you know, for the customers where that's important, right, the ability to be able to do that um, for their reasons, right, like that's important to us. And, we, you know, for us, it's really about enabling customers and getting out of the way and letting them do what's the right things for their business, right? And that, I think, is where BYOC plays and has become more and more, uh, you know, common or, or in necessity for companies. Awesome. Um, so we're going to dive into all of that. And I think, you know, that's the the uh, too long didn't read or the spoiler alert is we're going to dive into what, what BYOC is, um, why it matters so much to not just to bandwidth and to ring central, but why it can matter um, you know, deeply to an enterprise that's looking to digitally transform their communications, um, moving from these old kind of on-premise setups, uh, moving into the cloud or consolidating in the cloud. Maybe you've already moved, but you're trying to figure out how do I sort through what happened, you know, in the last couple of years. And so let's start there. Um, I think it, it's, it's important for us to acknowledge altogether that the global pandemic accelerated global digital transformation, right? It got fast tracked. 
Um, maybe you recognize yourself on this roller coaster ride here, right? Like you're the little kid hanging on for dear life, uh, just trying to figure out how do we sort through this, um, or even somebody in the back just screaming your head off. Uh, but digital transformation, it was never really an option, right? It was always something we knew was was coming. We knew we had to pay attention to it, but the pandemic forced us to face it head on. There was no option. Everybody was was moving to a, a remote, at least a remote hybrid environment. And, you know, we just sit sit in this space of realizing that, um, you know, it's just right in front of us. We can't avoid it. Um, and we had to figure out what to do with it, right? It, it catalyzed and accelerated, um, you know, moving to the cloud, but both the benefits of being in the cloud. So let's call that kind of the simplicity, the, the pieces that Lauren was talking about earlier. And then also those obstacles that you have to overcome. Those are going to be our complexities that we talk about today. It's not really anything new um, per se. There's there's things that evolve over time, but nothing necessarily new. Um, Lauren, I want you to kind of walk us through just from your experience here as we we dig into this idea of navigating complexity in our existing setups in pursuit of that simplicity. Walk us through what you've heard when you've been talking to our enterprise customers um, that we've been working on architecting solutions for and so on and so forth. Right. Sure. So I guess the first thing that I'll start with um, before I start to click in a little deeper on each of these bubbles is the idea that our goal with all of this is to make the integration as simple as possible. So no complicated setups. We want to simplify the rules. We want to, you know, make it very easy to configure and migrate from where you are to where you're going. And so what we've noticed along the way, some big stumbling blocks and places where we've really focused our efforts on trying to minimize these pain points are, you know, you've got a lack of feature parity. So you need to keep some piece of your existing architecture in play and then you've got to, but you want to move most people to the cloud. Uh, Most people have distributed PBXs. Almost nobody's got just one in one place, particularly if you're a large enterprise And you may have different providers, particularly if you're global and managing all of that. You might even have different platforms. So this is very, very common. Company buyers buys another company. You got one type of switch here. You got another type of switch there. You got another one for your call center. You got another one for a different call center. You've got three for your unified communication stack. And where we all want to go is to a more streamlined and simplified and interoperable platform. And interoperability, I think, is another keyword here that we we really focus on a lot. They're complex. These migrations are complex. And we focused on trying to build partnerships and bring learning and best practices that we've picked up along the way from doing it the hard way with the early adopters so that people who are moving now don't have to do it the hard way. Uh, we typically will have, for example, plan, you know, we'll have a project manager that works with you that helps, you know, we'll have porting folks that even though ports are so easy with bandwidth, that's clicks of buttons. We have people who are there for folks who still find that a little unnerving and there's lots and I can understand why. Um, it's, it's a confusing landscape, right? How do you know where to go? How do you, how do you, pick somebody and then hope and cross your fingers that that person is building not just for today, but also for whatever is going to happen in the future. The world is hybrid. Not everybody's going in. Well, almost nobody's going to the office these days. We were, then we weren't, we were, now we're not. (laughs) So um, how do we, how do we handle that? And then especially, and this is a place where we've really, really seen some pain and we've been working hard to try to address it with the regulatory landscape. And by that, I mean primarily two things. First of all, the emergency services landscape, which can be a really complex thing to solve when you've got people all over the place. And then also privacy, security, and some of those considerations too with legislations um, and consumer protection laws and things like that. And then finally, just the actual process of getting off your legacy hardware. There is a there is a migration path, and we're going to talk about this more in a few in, a, in another couple of slides. But moving off of getting numbers from here to there, and then hope it, having it not be a thing where if you weren't quite ready for here, you can't go back. You know, we we want to enable a really smooth migration so that 
it's not like hit. I, I, the analogy I, I use, I don't know if it's a good one, you know, but best I can do at the moment anyway, but it's like you hit it, you hit the ball over the fence, you poured a number, you hope, you hope and pray that everything is configured properly and that thing's going to work. But what if it doesn't? Or, you know, what if somebody wasn't quite ready or department didn't get trained or somebody was out sick or something? So the ability to migrate back and forth between the old and the new until you've really got everything firmly set in the new is something and a part of the journey that we've really noticed was a pain point. And I think we've got some good solutions for as well. So I know that's a yeah. lot of words, a lot of bubbles. And I don't know, Simi, I was also thinking your next slide is going to, I think, delve into some of this too, but any additional color um, on the journey, I think, yeah. would be helpful. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think the, the journey is the part of it, right? And I think one of the the funny things is like I've seen over the last, you know, 10, 15 years, like in UC is this idea of like, oh, you're always moving to the right. And it's like, uh, that reality didn't end up being true, right? You have, like you talked about, different departments might move at different places, right? The customer success side, or you have different acquisitions or just different countries end up driving different pieces of this to be different. And one of the things, you know, what we've seen, you know, is that each of these things serve a purpose, right? You have your CRM apps, they have a purpose, they need to do a thing. And, you know, I think, Four years ago, so there's this idea of communications enable business process, and that's you know that's that's the goal, right? Is the idea is that I get my business process, my communication tools just flow into it. The reality sometimes has a way of knocking that off, but we want to get there, right? We always want to be moving in that direction. And you know what we've seen definitely is this: it used to be all or nothing, right? Everything had to be on prem, or everything had to be in the cloud, or this or that, and more and more hybrid has become a, a common term, right? And, you know, from my view, from, from Ring Central's view, that that's okay, right? Like that is that is customers making choices. There's no right or wrong. It's use the right tools for the right purpose. And as long as you've got the right justifications, the right goals, like we can make it all work together, right? And I, th- I think that's that's part of this partnership, right? That's both bandwidth and Ring Central bring to this is that, you know, look, we want to make these things work. We want to enable we want you to be compliant. We want it to be high quality. We want it to be a smooth service, no matter which piece a customer is in. Do we want people to start being able to take advantage of cloud service providers and cloud PBXs and all those pieces? Yeah, because there's a lot of benefits, right? The service reliability and the things like that that you can do at scale are much different than managing a gateway at every single physical location, right? Mm-hmm. That was hard. Are there reasons to still have physical locations? Absolutely. Right. This this is the whole point of, you know, this I think your point of now everyone is hybrid. Hybrid is the default now. It's no longer the option or the goal. It's you've got to be able to support people who might be in the office for a conference, a meeting, a purpose. But a huge chunk of your users are going to be remote or moving or roaming or in transition. And the days of, okay, I've got one big campus and I only need to solve at the campus. Those are kind of gone. And you know, I think that's what we've seen um, and part of what we like to help. And where this BYOC solution is here is to help us bridge that gap between these and allow for, you know, you as a customer, you can have one set of departments still on a legacy system, one set of departments completely in the cloud, and one set of departments that are moving, right? And that's okay. And that, that's the nice part about the solution that we're putting together is that we allow for that, right? It's no longer, oh, I've got to give them a lower level of service. Like, no, you give them a good, consistent experience. Given that smooth transition, I think uh, Lauren talked a little about the teams and the tools and things like that that are designed to help smooth that process. And that's, you know, for us, that's the end end solution, right? Is you've got the people, the right people, the right processes, the right technology to do the job. Yeah, I think that's great. And I um, appreciate the the added color there on the the people and the right processes. I think that really is a unique dynamic for you know, ring central bandwidth together, right? Like really honing in on what is it that we each do so well and how can we continue to drive the innovation and the feature sets around each of those pieces for an enterprise to be able to use that together and, and kind of deliver an incredible solution. So um, let's double click down into the, the specifics. Um, want to make this conversation today as practical as possible for anybody that maybe joined and was like, help me sort out. <laughs> There's a lot of chatter about What's right for my business? You know, what is bring your own carrier as a whole? 
um, how do we actually make this useful? Um, it, not that what we've talked about thus far isn't, but let's let's make it super practical. Um, I'd love to hear, you know, Lauren, from your perspective, right? Just help us kind of clear up, like, what is bring your own carrier? Um, how we see it, at least, and then what are the options here when we think about, you know, what what Samir was talking about there with the the kind of all in approach of just coming direct to Ring Central for the MVP solution versus bring your own carrier, and what are some of the options? Yep. So I think you know, obviously, behind door number one is. Um, go all in with MVP. And I think Bamlet's in a unique position there because that's a great option. Um, We support it, we power it. So it it wins for us. Um, But then, like I said, there's a lot of reasons why you're going to want to bring your own carrier. And we typically see two versions of that, which would be number two and number three on the side. And it really gets down to how much SIP infrastructure do you need and do you want and do you want to continue to manage? And we first started this journey we several years ago when we were first really starting to look at how do we build these integrations into, into the cloud platforms and make them seamless and easy. We really thought initially that the vast majority of people would still want to own and maintain their SIP infrastructure. And what's been really interesting to see over the past few years is that that narrative really start to switch. So today, more often than not, we see people who would like us to just simply take that on. They they are ready to not have to be experts in all of that. And they are very happy to outsource that to us. That having been said, there are some real legitimate reasons why you need to keep those gateways on-prem. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll dive into some more of those in a little bit, but I'll just throw a couple of them out here, just a couple of use cases. But we, we have a customer who has a clean room. And the actual idea of ripping out all of the infrastructure in a clean room and then having to get it sterile again, even though it was old legacy analog type stuff, it was rarely used, mostly bat phones for emergencies and things like that. And so, you know, at, at a certain point, you say, I, I'm, I'm just stuck. I've got to keep that there. I've, I've got to do it. Just the, the cost of ripping that out is not going to be cost effective for me. And in a situation like that, of course, you're going to keep. You're going to keep, you need to keep your, you need to, you need to keep your own infrastructure. You need to route calls in that way. And so moving entirely to a cloud solution in a situation like that wasn't going to work for them. But on the flip side of that, like I said, the vast majority of customers that we're seeing today really come to us and they're saying after they sort of get over the initial idea of sort of what does this mean sort of emotionally (laughs) for Visibility, you know, if you have an air session border controller, there's certain things that you have direct fingers on keyboards that you're able to see and do and touch. And, um, but like I said, more and more people just literally would like a seamless integration between us and Ring Central. And that's why we built Duet is our brand for the service. So it is a partnership between us where we've basically taken the complexity out of all of it and you just order it and our configurations work with Ring Central's configurations and it's pre-configured and it's really easy to manage. Yeah. And then so some meat as we drill down even further, right? Thinking about those three options. Um, I think Lawrence teed this up. Give us just kind of a quick understanding, if you will, about like how this looks architecturally when we think about those three parties, you know, between the customer, bandwidth, and Ring Central, who manages what, how does it all work together? Um, and, and maybe what are the the values in that? Yep. So, you know, the, the the number one is easy for me, right? That's all Ring Central. We've got different partners like bandwidth behind the scenes, but at the end of the day, you as a customer, you just have to kind of interact with one interface and all of those different pieces of the puzzle are coming together. Um, and you're you're gonna rely on us. Basically, you've got to have uh, access to the internet and you've got your full solution. You know, that's great if you don't want to deal with additional vendors, you don't have a vendor in that market, you're not talking about one stop shop, you can get it all done, it's easy. Most of it is pretty much all controlled in the service portal. So you've got a uh, command of everything all within one place. Uh, with the bring your own carrier option, and part of what we've introduced in the last year uh, is the ability to allow for the applications and that service portal to continue to be kind of the key place where you manage your users and things like that. But you can connect your telephony, your existing carriers up with that service. So you can use different number blocks and number ranges. I'll talk a little about what we're doing differently there. Um, in the next slide, but 
the the main thing for two and three, right, is I think like Lauren said, you might have reasons why either the infrastructure you have um, or like we talked about different services that are part of your communication portal. So you might have your contact center and some other integrations that are already sitting on larger SBCs that are managing. In that case, absolutely, right? You can continue to connect that and it becomes part of your larger uh, communication you know, infrastructure. Or sometimes you go, I don't want to deal with that stuff. And that's where the let number three really becomes the option where if you're just focusing on that aspect and you don't want to have handle any of that infrastructure, again, from your perspective, you just need to have connectivity. Um, and as long as you can connect to the portals, right, the applications, everything like that, your calls will continue to flow. So it really kind of comes down to what else is there a reason to have those SBCs where, and like we talked about, this is the power of the duet program that Bandwidth and Ring Central put together is where, from my perspective, you know, different, different carriers we partner with for BYOC, we've actually got kind of a set of people, a set of processes and some interoperability that we've been able to do so that it's pretty streamlined for customers, right? You really don't have to know anything that's going on because we have the larger partnership there powering um, that agreement. So that's kind of the strength. And I think, you know, from the architecture perspective, the nice part, you know, for your customers is it used to be this thing. If I was on my legacy platform or PBX, I've got a different phone, I've got a different application, I've got a different service experience, my voicemail numbers are different, right? Things like that. Now, any of these three options, that end user experience is pretty much going to be the same. That's, that's kind of the strength here, right? Is we're giving you three options, but it really, it's about how you want to engage with it, what pieces you want to handle. Your customers don't need to worry and think about that. They don't need to consider, oh, shoot, I moved over on this day to this platform, this or that. That user experience stays the same. And it really is just what do you want to manage? Are there reasons that you have to maintain that infrastructure for certain pieces or you know, just for your own comfort or because those are already assets you want to sweat, right? You've got any of those reasons or valid options. You've got all. Yeah, I love that. Um, I think that that tees up where we're headed next. Just to say, you know, what you're not seeing on this wiring central BYOC slide is it's a different end user experience, right? Like that's not what we're about today. It's 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 going to be the same experience. What we're really focused on is the IT decision makers, the people that are working behind the scenes to manage everything and. Um, you know, implement these solutions. So talk to us just a little bit, a bit about that simplifying processes piece and how how RingCentral BYOC enables that um, in an easy way. Yeah, happily. This is this is the fun part for me, right? Like the, you know, BYOC has been around, um, you know, as a concept for, for a long time, right? And, and kind of different vendors have different ways of implementing, right? And a lot of times, you know, the the when we looked at it, there's the kind of test and turn up, that initial setup of the trunks. And then there's, the in-life management. And we looked at it and we said, okay, test and turn up, right? Like we can write a command shell so you can do logging and testing. And most people who've done trunk turnups, they know like, yeah, the first try you got to like, okay, I got to change a normalization rule or I got to add a plus one or I got to do something like that or the search never worked. That, so we've got, you know, teams and support. And like I said, for with bandwidth, we've got a specific process for it uh, to make sure that all that goes in in place. But what we really focused on is allowing you as an admin, once you've got your trunks up in place, you can manage those numbers just the way you would. You can even add new blocks of numbers. So if you call up bandwidth and say, hey, I need an additional 20 numbers, you can go in and on the Ring Central side, you can add that all yourself. You don't have to call us. You don't have to make a complicated port or coordinate like a three way conversation. Um, once the trunks are up and running, you're set to go and you can add, assign those to users, remove those from users. Use them on your IVRs. Use them. You can add all the rules you want, um, and so that's really what we spent the time doing: is making sure that those move ad changes, that in life management, is as seamless as possible. Um, and again, right, like that, it can be treated the same way that anything else in the system is. It's not a special trimmed down version, this or that. Um, it's easy, familiar way to do this, so that allows you to handle it, you know, in different regions, different geographies, or different services in whatever way it makes sense, the right sense for your business. So that's a little bit about what we were able to do that's different, um, that we're pretty excited about that we launched at the tail end of last year. Um, and again, like this is um, you know, something we see as helping make this complicated space a little simpler, a little bit easier, more accessible for uh, customers. Yeah, um, that's so important. You know, and I think 
as we as we move into one more of the more practical ways that we, we kind of think about this approach, um, what bandwidth, what Ring Central, you know, what we're about, right? We're helping enterprises get from wherever they are today, the here and now, to there, which is the cloud, right? Um, we think back a few slides, right? That idea of we're trying to get us to move up and to the right. There's there's virtues and values of being up there um, in the cloud, but doing so without things breaking down, right? Um, there, there's a lot of fear and uncertainty about taking on a big project like this, um, where Lauren was talking about before, right? Where there's this fear of you get to a point where you're ready to to migrate and move things into the cloud and is that a, a one directional move, or is there the ability there to kind of um, pace it at your own, you know, you know, your own needs, and then also pace it if you need to come back um, to your existing on-prem equipment for whatever reason, right? And so I know at bandwidth, you know, we see this part of kind of our early role in the process of helping you get from here to there um, as so important. And so, Lauren, I just want to want to hear from you. You know, you, you've been in this space for a while. Um, you've been on the front lines helping our customers, you know, migrate um, to a cloud carrier or cloud platform like um, like Ring Central, you know, and others. Uh, what's the value of using a cloud native carrier like bandwidth for, for a BYOC? Um, and then I know we've got some some thoughts here as you drill down into kind of the next couple of slides to show us how it works. Yeah. So I think um, for the purposes of this slide, I'll just summarize it by saying the real value is that when everything is software driven, you're not sitting there waiting for a bunch of manual things to happen behind the scenes. And you're not waiting for uh, a bunch of things that are really outside your control to influence when your migration happens. So for instance, being able to schedule the date, the time, and the minute of a port, as minor as that sounds, is pretty major when you think about m- most folks who have ported numbers in the past will, I think, maybe can relate to this idea of, oh, God, should I schedule it on Saturday? If I even can, because most carriers won't let you. Um, but I'm definitely not making it home for dinner. But if we could say, ah, you want to do it at 5.01, yeah, 5.31, whatever it is, um, there you go. Schedule it and it's done. And this is all software controlled. So it's um, if, if you can imagine uh, a little slider where you just slide a date and time and you say, that's when I'd like my port to happen. That's when the, that's when your port's going to happen. So we also will black out dates that are unreasonable. So if we know that port's going to take a week as an example, because that particular carrier or that country or something has processes that just require more time, we won't let you have the expectation that, hey, this thing could really happen tomorrow, but it's not even possible. We also provide status along the way. And again, all of this is automated. So while absolutely you can pick up the phone and call us and we are here for you, um, you don't have to do that, right? You could just log into the portal. You can see the status of everything that's happening along the way. And I think that's one of the big advantages of being able to migrate. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit more specifically in two slides about what that actual migration journey looks like. But just having the amount of automation behind it means that there's a lot fewer breakage points along the way that are likely to trip up the process. Okay. Walk us through this best practice because I I love when we talk about this. Um, This is like (laughs) real life experience. (laughs) Lots of folks on this call probably can say, yep, been there, done that and seen that. But talk us about the cohorts and then that rollback piece. It's so, so important. Yeah. Okay. So I like with anything, the first thing you're going to do is make a plan. And the plan 100% of the time is not, I'm going to migrate everybody today all at once. Like that is never, ever what people decide to do. So after doing this a bunch of times with customers, we decided to try to think about these cohorts in the groups that we were actually seeing and share that, share that with the world. And for some of you who seen our our webinars before, some of my earlier webinars on this topic. This slide will probably seem familiar, but uh, we get a lot of good feedback on it. So we thought we'd put it into this one as well. Obviously, the first one that's very easy is departmental. Typically speaking, you're not going to do your C-suite before you do your IT department. You know what I mean? And you're not going to do your sales teams and your ops teams before you might do your attack team or your knock team, right? So there's typically an order um, to, to which you're going to migrate 
your customers. And department is clearly an easy one because you also have to train them, right? You've got to, you've got to find typically what we see customers do is find a partner in each department who becomes the advocate or the SME for that department. And then you'll train them and then they become your advocate for the rest of the department and help extend the eye instead of every, instead of every 20,000 employees being at you, you know, you, the IT, you, the IT person getting all those phone calls saying, help, ah, how do I, you try to extend yourself by training trainers and by dividing the migration into departments. Departments are logical constructs, but they're not the only ones. Special business needs departments. Like I said, I think I mentioned the green room before executive teams. Maybe it's a rural location or maybe it's by country. Um, although location based is what I'm going to add to next, but there's some special, there might be departments that have special needs, a manufacturing facility that has a unique infrastructure might, uh, or campus. These are all ways to think about it. Location based, another obvious one. Do everybody in this built, you know, this location, your headquarters, then do your satellite office in Seattle or Chicago or Shanghai or wherever. You're going to do those in groups because they'll probably have unique areas of interest. And the last one is system based. So I also mentioned on this, mentioned this earlier, but we very, very often see it's not just one system that you're moving from. It's often many systems that you're moving from. Most multinational companies that we work with do not have a single UC platform that covers everybody all at once everywhere in the world. So it can obviously make sense if you've got an end-of-life contract with one vendor or you're trying to shut down an old legacy on-prem system to try to migrate them based on the infrastructure that you're, you're dealing with and break them up into groups that way. So those are just, again, I just share these because they're ways that maybe some of you can identify with in terms of logically breaking up how you might migrate your users. And then this one right here, we will go into a little detail about the actual port migrate process. So one of the things that we like to do is to connect SIP trunks to your existing infrastructure before we do anything. And the reason that we like to do this is because we like to port the numbers while users are still connected to the infrastructure, your existing infrastructure, where that's possible. Now, if your existing uh, infrastructure isn't SIP enabled, that's obviously not going to be possible. But most of the time, we do have at least some part of the infrastructure that we can plug into uh, that is SIP enabled. The reason we like to do this is because it decouples the port from the migration. And once all the numbers are migrated over, and in, if you can imagine it into a single account with bandwidth, a single dashboard with bandwidth, you log in, all the numbers are there. And we have a construct, something that we call locations not necessarily a geographic location. It can represent any of those cohorts that we've discussed above on the previous slide, but you put all the numbers in there and then we set up the parallel infrastructure to connect you to Ring Central. So we have these two different locations set up where this location, every number in this location routes to Ring Central, every number in this location routes to the legacy on-prem, whatever the legacy system is. Then when you port, you're not actually, when you migrate, you're not actually porting at that point. You're actually just changing the routing for a number and it happens in real time. And that's the beauty of the software platform that we've built is that we're able to move numbers and move routing in real time so that if anything happens and you move that number over and there's anything wrong and IVR is improperly configured or this really did happen, there was an executive who was on vacation came back, was like, where's my phone system? The IT manager was like, nope, you don't have that big phone on your desk with buttons. You have this thing. It's an app on your phone. And the executive said, I'm not ready. I need a little more time. Well, they could immediately move that number back and it starts routing through the old system and then take the week or two that it was needed to get that person up and running and then migrate over. So that's what we need by making the migration path a place where there's fewer places to break and more places where um, the software itself controls the call routing and therefore um, gives you the flexibility to move calls around. And this also future proofs your future. You know, if you've got something that you need to build into the call flow in the future, no problem, right? You can build it into the call flow here 
on our platform. Yeah, I think that's so so key. You know, thinking about um, you know future proofing, thinking about um, working with partners. So thinking about Ring Central, thinking about bandwidth as being these industry leaders for innovation, right? And and working with the right strategic partnership that can can help you get to where you're going, can help you get to the right tools and, and make it all work in the cloud. So um, I'll just kind of summarize. We're gonna we're gonna wrap up here um, and then hopefully take a few questions. So just wanted to make sure that that was on our audience's mind. If you do have questions that you'd like to, you know, put those into the Q and A box, feel free to start doing that if you haven't already. Um, seen seen a few come in, uh, but just to kind of talk about, you know, again, reiterating the benefits. If we're in pursuit of this idea of simplicity, simplicity in the cloud, um, the idea of bringing your own carrier or unbundling sort of that PSTN access, the the voice and the messaging and the um, emergency services from the UCAS, um, it might kind of seem like at, at the outset that it adds complexity because you're introducing an you know, extra variable to a relationship with bandwidth. Um, but we've taken a different approach. You know, we, we're leaning into these strategic partnerships with platforms like Ring Central, um, it, so that we can deliver that simplicity. And we do that through controlled migrations, right? Just like Lauren said, um, with the, the possibility of rollback as needed um, to manage those one-off scenarios where the executive comes back from vacation and needs to roll things back, right? And and, and other unforeseen um, circumstances like that. But also flexibility, right? Flexibility of those integrations that you're not sure you even need right now today. Um, flexibility around um, you know that migration path as well. Um, and then, of course, you know, the direct troubleshooting, direct lines to the carrier for troubleshooting, and then direct lines, obviously, to Ring Central if there if there comes an issue um, that you need technical support on from from the MVP uh, perspective there. And then lastly, but but not least, you know, benefits of the economics, right? As you're thinking about um, your large enterprise, um, definitely can stand to gain some shared use economics, right? As you think about pooling minutes across, um, across the board and you think about you know the value of consolidating if you've got other components of your communications um, you know stack that you consolidate with bandwidth uh, just the economical advantages that can come from that to deliver even more um, ROI this is kind of where we're headed right so we Lauren kind of teased this out where you know digital transformation and and migrating to to the cloud it's more than just a UCAS migration there are other parts and parcels of you know this Big picture communication ecosystem, and um, you know, you're integrating third party tools. Your contact center may not be ready to fully migrate yet. Um, you know, you've got different needs based on your existing on premise um, setups, and so working directly with a carrier like bandwidth, especially one with the software and the network, um, so imperative. Um, we believe it it helps uh, enterprises that we've worked directly with to control their migration and and really um, take control of it via software. Um, and and we we're doing that specifically around this duet for Ring Central integration. So we're better together uh, for enterprise communications. We really do believe that that um, that partnership, that ten plus years. So you know, Samip, Lauren, and I, and a whole bunch of other people that work with us. Right, we're just on this webinar talking to you today. Three three faces, but it is so many more people that have gotten us to where we are today. Um, to be able to de- deliver, uh, you know, that migration control, speed of implementation, um, truly a global UCAS solution between just two two providers, right? So bandwidth being able to provide that access, um, you know, full PSD and replacement in over thirty eight countries and territories across the globe, as well as you know the the ability for Ring Central to be that that complete solution for you um, from a UCAS perspective um, and beyond there too. So. Really excited about the partnership. Really excited about what this could mean for you. Um, just to kind of wrap us up here, would love to have more conversation with you. I know this is hopefully kind of a quick high level overview of what the solution looks like. Um, you know, what the options are along the way. We know everybody's setup and, and their existing infrastructure is unique. And so we'd love to have a conversation with you about what that could look like as you're journeying, um, into the cloud. Um, Lauren, Samip, anything you wanna you wanna throw in there at the end here, just as we kind of wrap up, and then we can transition back to to Eric for a few questions at the end here. Uh, yeah, I can, I can go. Uh, yeah, I mean, again, just thank you everyone for the time. Uh, again, hopefully you get, found some interesting tidbits, uh, kind of in our approach and what we're trying to accomplish jointly. 
Um, you know, again, I know one of the big concerns with uh, bringing your own carrier is always the finger pointing. Um, and that's part of why we're kind of happy to do this joint uh, presentation and talk about Duet and some of the different changes that both Bandwidth and Ring Central are bringing to this space and some of what we're doing together. So, um, you know, hopefully it's, there's some interesting stuff and uh, definitely worth something we're excited about. So thank you again, everyone, for the time. Couldn't have said it better myself. Awesome. So Eric, I'll turn it back over to you. Um, thanks again, everybody, for listening. Happy to stick around for some Q&A, um, and then we'll wrap up. Great. Well, thanks. Thanks very much, Travis. And thanks uh, to uh, to Lauren and uh, Samit also. A great presentation, really. Um, you know, timely as as you say, this is this is top of mind for a lot of enterprises now. Um, and so let's let's go to some of our questions. Um, the first one, and I think particularly as you think about you know the European countries like Germany decommissioning their ISDN lines, and UK is is on path to do that. Um, is Duet for Ring Central a global offer? I can Absolutely. I can grab this one. It isn't well. We'll we'll both answer the question. It is indeed a global offer. Yes. So, okay. um, it is a an offer where um, and it's full PSTN replacement. So I think that's important too. So one of the things that um, I see in another one of the questions that's popped up, and maybe I'll just blur into that one right now, is when we think about unified communications, it is more than just making and receiving a phone call. It's also the ability to reach emergency services. And it's also the ability to do messaging, right? Because messaging becomes more and more of an important part of these platforms. So it's really all three of those things that you want to consider when you're thinking about bringing your own carrier and how these things work in each country and availability in each country has differentiation limitations. And obviously, Germany is an interesting example with some of the rules they ha have around telephone number ownership. But uh, that's what we're trying to do here is we're trying to make that simple to decomplex the myriad of relationship of, of regulations and rules and and regulations throughout the world and try to consolidate that down into something that's really easy for enterprises to just purchase and configure and be done with. Makes sense. I would also, Lauren, you just if I could throw in there real quick, Eric, sorry about that. I was just going to say, okay. you know, this is this is something when it, we think about it being global, um, such a, a testament to just to the journey that Bandwidth's been on, right? Over the last year, um, you know, working with with our acquisition of the Voxbone, uh, you know, now bandwidth as a whole, um, really accelerating us into this global space with that global coverage. Um, and, and then, you know, working hand in hand with a, a provider like Ring Central that's um, thinking about the needs of a global end user base. So really excited about that. Um, just wanted to add that little tidbit there that uh, we really have for for anybody that's not been paying attention, <laughs> it's been a it's been a journey over the last year, but really exciting to to be where we are today um, with with global coverage. Definitely. Okay, and Lauren, you mentioned um, emergency services, and and here at the beginning of the year, um, I think there was some attention uh, paid to the kind of the latest uh, piece of the Ray Bounds Act uh, just came into effect, and over the last year, of that and and Kari's yeah. law and and such have come. Um, what are the kind of implications for E911 in all of this transition and how do you kind of try to smooth that for folks? Yeah, that's a great question. And one we get probably as much, if not more than any other, because again, like I said, we think, ah, it's a UC platform. And it did used to be in the olden days that your emergency, if you were to dial emergency services, if you were to dial 911, for example, in the United States, and this, this, these rules and regulations are for the United States, right? But so how this works in the rest of the world is going to vary by country. But the United States is the first to implement something called dynamic location routing, which basically means that it's not good enough to just associate an address with the phone number. You actually have to try to pick up an address of where that person is when they make the phone call. And I think that's the the, the big difference. So you can pick up that ad. There's a number of different technological ways to solve for this. And obviously we have a, a, a unique way of doing it with um, Ring Central to try to um, make sure that we're able to capture in real time where those calls are coming from and then get them routed to the appropriate PSAPs or at least routed to a call center if the address is not available so that that call can be properly routed. 
And there were, Ray Bombs Act did say that, so platforms like the MVP platform have to be compliant now in, in, in January of this year. So it's a big deadline that's been looming for a lot of, um, a lot of platforms out there, a lot of carriers out there. And we'd be happy to dive into lots more details. It's kind of, there's so much I could talk for another hour just on emergency services, but it's probably best for a, a one-on-one conversation with anybody who wants to dive in further. And I don't know, Sabeep, you may have some additional color to add too. Uh, yeah, I mean, again, I, I think it's one of those ones that there's there's so much to deep dive in, but I think that the main takeaway, right, is obviously I mean, the, the Bandwidth and Ring Central team have spent a lot of time going over the different options, different solutions, and how to make sure that no matter which of the different solutions you go with, we got you covered that your compliance is there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. All right. Um, uh, here's a, a question from the audience. Uh, does does there need to be a time limit on complete porting? Hmm. I was kind of thinking about that. Um, and I don't know if, Lauren, if you have a, a perspective um, or if the individual that asked the question could maybe clarify a little bit if I'm thinking about that from the slide that we described <clears throat> where we're we're sort of separating the migration from the port itself, if we're talking about that as being, you know, time bound, um, that's really up to the needs of the organization, right? It's it, it doesn't matter. Um, obviously, you know, Samit probably wants wants us to say, right, like, let's get to Ring Central as fast as we can, um, which I totally agree. I think there's tons of value and benefit there. So we would we would agree, but I think we want to say from the the outset that both partners here in this in this journey are about getting you even thinking back to Samip's slide right about the options that exist as you think about moving toward higher value and higher productivity going from on prem to the cloud it's a journey it's not going to be a snap your fingers and one day you're there so that evolution and that journey um, has to be paced at whatever speed your organization can work through um, and and both side of that too like as fast as you want to go I think we're we're interested in figuring out how we can align around that as well. Yeah. If that's yeah, the way that I, the question was worded, <laughs> that's I should say uh, that as a yeah. punctuation. Well, and maybe just as a guidepost for anybody who's interested in just some of our own personal experiences, we have seen companies with thousands of employees migrate within a few months. And we've also seen them cus- customers take eight, nine, ten months to, to complete the entire migration stack. So it really just depends on the complexity, the size of the organization, but but the actual technology is pretty straightforward and easy to configure, and that's the that's the beauty of it. Setting up SIP trunks with bandwidth is super easy; it takes you a couple hours. You know, it's just, this is not that big of a deal. And then porting the numbers again is is it's more a matter of you know. It's some some carriers we have a three day window, two day window. Some carriers we have e binds with, and they auto port. So, you know, we've got we got an porting team of you know fifty plus people that literally just think and work and deal with porting issues every day, all day. And to the extent we can automate it with carriers, we've done that. And some carriers literally don't even have portals for customers to log into yet. <laughs> so clearly, those aren't automated either. But we do what we do is we strip down all that complexity and just. Basically, you can when you go in, you type in a number, you, you will see where that number is coming from, um, and then what the service level intervals are op, are what options are from that carrier. So it makes it very easy to just group them and create a strategy for doing it on whatever time frame makes sense to you. Again, the whole idea is this for not to be stressful, right? Because it's a project, it's going to be work. We recognize that, right? It's like anytime you do anything like this, it's almost like, oh God, this is a huge project, and it is. We want this piece of it, however, to be pretty easy for you. And that's what that's what our goal is. All right. Okay, and we've got time for one more question um, on one of my favorite topics, cost savings. Um, and somebody's asking how how much I, I think what it comes down to is how much of how much of cost savings is sort of a factor of scale. And this person's saying if you have around, you know, two hundred thousand minutes a month, if you if you don't have these kind of big enterprise scenarios. Um, is is cost savings still one of the um, drivers that that you can use to to um, justify this? I 
feel greedy answering this one too because I took the last one. But uh, I um, <laughs> RSVP, if you want it, it's all yours. <laughs> um, but I would say that what what we typically see is 500 to 1,000 users. The cost savings are are usually always there. Um, in some way, shape, or form. Some of it depends on, again, the complexity of the infrastructure you're trying to manage and how much you can get rid of it, right? Which has percolates throughout the organization in terms of expertise and people you need to manage things, et cetera. Um, definitely, if you're in the a sub 100, we, we very rarely see it making sense. Um, we would say, buy MVP, it's a fantastic product. <laughs> I don't know, Sabit, does that kind of track with what you're seeing too? Yeah, uh, you know, again, there, there's definitely scenarios where, okay, if you've got a specific range or you're talking to a specific country, right? but yeah, generally yeah. It, you know, those are the numbers where it, you, have, you have to get a, above a certain number where it starts to really make sense where the cost of maintaining that management relationship makes, makes sense, makes fiscal sense. And that's a really good point. Could, this is aggregate maybe and not, not country by country by country. When I was when I was quoting those, that's a, that's a good call out. Sorry, Travis. No, that's good. I was just going to say if I could um, plug, you know, one more piece of hey, <laughs> we'd love to have a conversation with you. Um, if if there are specifics like that, I think everybody's situation is unique. Um, so we can uncover, you know, what's going on behind the scenes. What are the the different pathways that we can take to try to figure out where savings exist, um, things like that. So uh, I think it's unique, just as you even heard there between Steve and Lauren, right? Like thinking about global and what country specifics and all of that, it, it becomes almost impossible to say without a doubt, yes, this specific, you know, uh, thing to be true. But I think everything Lauren said, totally agree with that and Steve, um, but we'd love that conversation with you. 